This is the third video in a series of videos about Latin, and this is about this video is about introductory materials for Latin learners. And what we have in front of us is um, my grandmother's high school Latin textbook um, from the 1930s. Uh, just to let you know, things haven't changed all that much. Um, on the left-hand page, there's a word list, and then there's an explanation in English of some of the words. And drill and review. However, at the beginning of the lesson, you'll see that there's a, quite a bit of Latin reading involved, but also quite a bit of English explanation. And again, word lists drill and review the exercises where they ask you to decline various words and give definitions translate these sentences into latin translate these sentences into english um and this is going to be suspiciously like a lot of other books um it's an older book so it has color plates added in but that's not what you're interested in but I wanted to show this to you first so you could see that, um, well, the more things change, the less things change. This first book is um, Getting Started with Latin uh, by William Linney. Um, it's a beginning textbook. It's very, very simple. I would not describe it as a serious textbook, however, if you're just interested in a little bit of Latin, he breaks it down into very, very small pieces. And you have very simple exercises, and the exercise the exercises all have answers in the back of the book, so that's something you're going to want. But it's very gentle, it's not very serious, unlike the um Peter Jones book that I showed you for Greek. This one doesn't have that English humor in it, nor does it have nice adapted passages for you, but it'll get your toes wet, breaks it down, keeps it simple. For younger children who are homeschooled, we have Latin for Children by Larson and Perrin. Um, And it also is pretty typical. Up here, at the beginning of the chapter, you've got your paradigms, you have a word list, grammar explanation in English with a couple of Latin examples, and some exercises, and a quiz. This is very typical of one end of a spectrum of materials, and we call that one end or at least what I've heard it called, is grammar translation. And this is very, very typical of a grammar translation textbook. There's a paradigm, there's a word list, there are exercises. And again, this is aimed at younger children, six, seven, eight, nine. It is not aimed at adults, so it's very simple and bite-sized as, as it should be. Um, but it's very much on the grammar translation end. Here's another book for kids called Minimus, starting out in Latin. It is by the people who put out the Cambridge Latin course. Oh, that's right, Cambridge Press. Um, and you'll see that it looks rather different from Latin for children. Over here, we have a comic strip, mostly written in Latin. As, as you can see, there's not a whole lot. This is all English, but these short bits here are in Latin, and the pictures carry the meaning, and it's more of a reading. Um, and you're going to hear me refer to the other end of the spectrum as reading. Um, grammar translation on one end, reading on the other. And again, it's a spectrum. You're neither purely one or purely the other. And as you can see, there's still grammar explanation. 
And then more pictures showing off how to use the things you have just learned. Um, the word lists are shorter, but there's still word lists right here. Um, this also introduces the culture of Roman Britain. It's very colorful. It's also aimed at younger children. And I think it's a really nice intro to Latin. It's gentle. Um, teaches the kids some useful things. But as I said, it's the other end of the spectrum. It's more of a reading textbook as opposed to a grammar translation textbook. But like I said, it's a spectrum. It's not strictly one or the other. This is Henley Latin. Zoom in a little bit here. This is Henley Latin. It is a reprint from the 50s. Um, it is very traditional. It is very Catholic. And if you are not traditional or a Catholic, this might be too traditional or too Catholic for you. Um, and again, here's the unit. Here's an explanation of the grammar. Here's your vocabulary list. More grammar. And of course, because it's for high school students, there's more work. And here are some exercises where you translate from Latin into English and then from English into Latin and more grammar explanation. Um, the author of this book is very proud of the fact that there are no pictures in it. Um, or rather very few pictures. There are some. And this is more on the grammar translation end. Another book aimed at high school students is this one. It's Ecce Romani, and this is more of a reading textbook. Ecce Romani and the Cambridge Latin course are more representative of this style. Let's see. And each chapter will start off with a reading in Latin. Some comprehension questions. Um, since this is a newer textbook, there's go on lines with it. There are notes explaining the reading, more readings in Latin, and then some grammar explanation. And one of the things I've noticed with the reading textbooks, it tends to be reading first, then grammar explanation. You never really get all the way away from heavy amounts of English in Latin textbooks. And there's just, there doesn't seem to be much way around it except for one. This is not it, but I'd like to point it out. Since I did a little work on this book, not much, but a little little tiny, tiny bit. Um, this is Latin for the New Millennium from Bolchese Carducci. Oh. It is written by Tunberg and Minkova. And what I like about this book, it's kind of a hybrid between a strict reading method and a strict grammar translation. It's, it really tries to split the difference. Um, but what's really nice is that the Latin readings that they have in this book are adapted from real Latin literature. So if you go through the Latin for the New Millennium course, you will not only have learned Latin, but you'll have learned who the major figures within the Latin literary history are. Um, this one happens to be Erasmus, but again, over here, there's the reading. Here's the vocabulary that goes with it. Grammar explanations, grammar explanations, more exercises, more exercises, another grammar explanation, more exercises. Um, this is aimed at, I would say, high school level, though I hear some colleges are using it quite happily. Um, I've taught from this book, and I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's good. I think it might be a little bit difficult for a self-learner to use, but nevertheless, I think the the adapted readings from literary works make this so strong that it's worth worth using. As you can see, it's got a lot of pictures in it. Um, 
And here we have an adapted reading from Utopia. I think this is a really wonderful textbook. I wish it were more in the reading direction because nothing like reading Latin to teach you how to read Latin. Um, I wish there were more, but, you know, I didn't write it. This is looking at Latin. Um, what it is is not a textbook. It is a reference book. Um, and for those of you who get serious into Latin, at some point you're going to want to get a reference book of some sort or another. And what this one is going to do is explain various features of Latin. Like this one happens to explain on this page ablative of manner, and this one ablative of description. And it's going to show you how those work. I like this. Like here, special place constructions, also known as the locative, and this page is a positives. I like it because the explanations are kept nice and simple. Clear, to the point, visually well organized, very friendly for younger students. Now for two last textbooks. This is Wheelock's Latin, and it doesn't really look like the Wheelock's Latin that you're going to find either at Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble, because it's really old. <laughs> um, I bought this, I don't know, 22, 23 years ago, and as you can see, the pages are nice and yellow, and Wheelock's Latin is a college textbook. It is meant for adults. Um, I understand that the new editions of it have um, have answer keys, so for those of you learning on your own, you can do that. Um, and again, it's very much grammar translation. Here is the grammar explanation. Here's a bit more. Here by now is the vocabulary list that should be familiar to you, and translate that out of Latin. A nice thing they have is um, sententiae antiquae, which are actual bits of unadapted Latin to get you excited about what the Latin is. And this looks like a short reading passage. And again, this is this is an old edition. It is not the current edition out there, so the new edition may look substantially different, but at the heart of it, it's the same. It's a grammar translation textbook. It moves at a serious pace. It is for adults. Um, it is strangely popular in the homeschool community, but this is really a textbook for college-age students. This last one is Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata. And I really like it because there's not a word of English in it outside of the copyright page. Um, this entire book is written in Latin. The title page is in Latin. Everything is in Latin except for the copyright page. Um, and unfortunately, you've kind of got to look at mine with my notes in it. There's a map of Europe. There's a picture, and it's labeled with Oppidum. Fluvius and Insula, so you can see what those three things are. And he starts off very, very simply. Uh, Roma in Italia est. Italia in Europa est. Graecia in Europa est. And this is really nice because he's relying on the fact that Latin uses the same alphabet that we do. Um, a lot of the place names are going to be familiar, and if you don't know what in means as a speaker of English or any other modern European language, you should be able to figure it out really easily based on the word for in in whatever your native language is. Um, and it moves along. He's got pictures. He has notes in the sides explaining the differences between various, between new words. He'll tell you that this one means the opposite of that one. This word is means about the same thing as. He takes it bit by bit by bit. And in theory, 
it, it is possible to teach yourself Latin without ever resorting to English. What's really cool about this is that even the grammar explanations are in Latin. Um, he uses the Latin terminology, like this one happens to be um, masculinum, femininum, neutrum. This happens to be gender. And then he introduces genetivus, which is the genitive case. And he has exercises, pensum a. This one, you just fill in the endings. Pensum be, you fill in the word. Pensum k, you answer in complete sentences. There's a ever familiar vocabulary list there, but the difference is in this textbook, there is no definition. You've got to figure out what the definition is all on your own. Um, I've used this book with students as well. Um, I can't recommend it highly enough. It may be a little tricky to use with self-study, but if you apply yourself to it, it'll be okay. Um, I can't say enough about this textbook. It's all, it is all Latin. If you want to learn how to read Latin, read Latin. Um, I'm not a huge fan of grammar translation textbooks, as you may have guessed. Um, and, you know, sometimes you do need an explanation in English as to here's what this is, here's how it works. But I'd try to shy away from it as much as I could. Um, some people learn that way where they get an explanation and okay and they understand and they apply the rule and they're good to go i'm unfortunately a little bit stupider than that and i need to be beat over the head with about a hundred examples of here's how it works before i understand oh so that's how that works and that's why i like i prefer that method um anyway that's a short introduction to some of the things available but by no means is this all of what is available. Um, up next, books for reading unadapted Latin.